John chapter number 3. Begin reading the most recognizable verse in the Bible. John 3, 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world. That means he loved it on purpose. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for allowing us to be in the house of God this morning. God, we thank you for a good Sunday school hour. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Most importantly, we thank you for being a good God. We're thankful, Lord, you did make a way for sinners to be saved by the good grace of God. Lord, without you we have no hope. But Lord, we're glad we have hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, we pray for Miss Janet, who's sick today. We pray for others who are providentially hindered and who are not able to be here. We pray for others who are sick. God, you touch them. Father, we certainly do pray that you'd be with the Stanton family and comfort them in their mourning. Father, we pray as well for Florence Baptist Temple. You'd help them in the calling of their next pastor. Father, we also pray, Father, for Brother Greg. You'd use him today. and God be with him and bless Victory Baptist Church. Now, Father, for the next few minutes, we pray that you'd meet with us. God, you'd manifest yourself. God, you'd do a work around here that's eternal. God, we certainly pray in a crowd this size, if there's someone here that's a stranger to the grace of God, Lord, they don't know about Calvary. They don't know why you came. They don't know you in the free pardon of sins. We pray today would be the day of their salvation. God, we pray for every saved folk in here today. God, you'd bless them and help them to appreciate what they have in Christ more than they ever have before. Help us, Lord, in these days, Lord, to shine forth uh, brighter than any Christmas decoration to let the world know what Jesus has done in our hearts and lives. Uh, use this unworthy vessel now. Glorify your namesake. We'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. In these verses, we find... Uh, of some wonderful things. First of all, I'd like you to notice the motivation for Jesus. In verse number 16, it said, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, uh, but have everlasting life. Uh, can I say the motivation for Jesus to come and go to the cross of Calvary and to pay for your sin and my sin uh, was the fact that He loved us. Uh, I don't understand why he loved us, uh, but he loved us. Uh, and he loved us on purpose. Uh, and he came and did something for us that nobody else could do. Uh, he paid our sin debt uh, and made a way where you and I, uh, who were conceived in iniquity, uh, who were born sinners, uh, who sinned by practice and who sinned by nature, uh, made a way where our sins could be forgiven uh, and cleansed uh, and make us... Uh, fit subjects for the kingdom of heaven. Uh, his motivation, my dear friends, is that he loves us. Uh, nobody can ever say nobody loved me. Uh, friend, I've got good news. Jesus loves you. Uh, he loves you more than you know what love is. Uh, his motivation was love. Uh, we also find that Jesus uh, not only loved us and had the motivation for him coming was love, uh, but we find the ministry of Jesus. Uh, Look in verse number 17. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, uh, but that the world through Him might be saved. Uh, the Bible says that Jesus came seeking to save uh, that which was lost. Uh, 
You and I were lost in our sin. Uh, 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 we were dead to God because of sin. Uh, and we were lost and couldn't find our way to God. Uh, but Jesus came uh, and His ministry was to save sinners. Uh, 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 to lead us from darkness unto light. Uh, and make a way where we could have uh, a relationship with Almighty God. Uh, in verse number 3 the Bible says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto, the, unto thee... Uh, Except a man be born again, uh, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Uh, we were dead and lost in our sins, uh, but we had to be born again and brought to newness of life. And that is the ministry of Christ, uh, to bring every sinner under repentance. It's God's will that none should perish, uh, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, and Jesus' ministry is to save sinners. His motivation was love. But then we find in verses 18 through 21 the manifestation in knowing Jesus. Look what it says. He that believeth on him is not condemned. We ought to stop and shout right there. Hmm? We were born sinners and we were born under the condemnation of sin. But when we got born again, we're no longer condemned. Hmm? We had a death sentence, but now we have a life sentence. Huh? We're not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. You know why people don't come to God? They love their sin. They love their evil ways. They love darkness rather than light. Why do you think negative news flows a lot quicker than positive news? Because people love negative things. They love darkness. Hmm? Goes on to say, verse number 20, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Hmm? You know what? Cockroaches run when the light comes on. Hmm? Huh? Let that sink in for a minute. Neither cometh to the light, why, lest his deeds should be reproved. Folks don't want to get right with God because they've got to change their life. They can't stay in their sin. They can't live a wicked life. Hmm? Why do you think they, they don't want to come to church with you when you invite them to church? Because they don't want to hear about how bad a sinner they are. But if they ever got saved, they'd be glad to come to church. huh? Hmm? goes on to say, But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds might be manifest, that they are wrought in God. Hmm? You know what the manifestation is in knowing Jesus? You hang around the light. You walk in the light as he's in the light. You like being around the things of God because you're no longer what you used to be. What did you used to be? A sinner. Now you're a saint of God. What a blessing. I'm interested in verse 21. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Well, a few minutes this morning, I want to preach on that thought, wrought in God. Wrought in God. That word wrought means carefully crafted or shaped. Some of you that have been around for a while know what wrought iron is. It's usually twisted iron that make up a fence. Uh, and it is carefully shaped to get that consistent shape uh, in them, those fence rails. Uh, 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 it's carefully crafted and carefully shaped. Uh, can I say something this morning? Everyone is wrought by God. We're all fearfully and wonderfully made. But only believers are wrought in God. There's a difference in being wrought by God and being wrought in God. Everybody has been wrought by God. And can I say you'd be hard-pressed in America to find somebody who don't believe in God. But being wrought by God and believing in God isn't being wrought in God. See, to be wrought in God is God has to do a work in your heart and change you from being the sinner that you once were into making you a child of God. And I'm glad I'm wrought in God. I'm glad I'm in Him and He's in me. I'm glad I know Him and He knows me. I'm glad that His hand has done a work in my life. Has He done a work in your life? 
Can I say those that are in God, first of all, are unashamed? Hmm? You remember what we read there a minute ago? Those are, that are in their sin, they don't like the light. They hide from it. But those that have been placed in Christ, they're not ashamed. They like hanging around the light. Those that are in God are unashamed. Romans chapter number 10, verse number 8 says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and here's the key, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Uh, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, uh, and with the mouth the confession is made unto salvation. There's a lot that have a head knowledge. Uh, 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 they believe in Jesus. They believe the babe in the manger. They believe the, uh, uh, the Savior on the cross. Uh, they believe in Him, uh, but they haven't believed on Him. They have a head knowledge, but not a heart knowledge. Uh, 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 but oh, what a blessing when your heart believes on Him. Huh? What a blessing. Uh, it goes on to say, uh, For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on Him shall not be ashamed. Those that are in God are not ashamed. They're unashamed. Hmm? Do you ever see somebody say, well, I'm saved, I just don't want anybody to know about it. They're not saved. Because if God moves in you, you can't help but let everybody know about it. You're not ashamed of Him. How can you be ashamed of the one that lives inside of you? Hmm? But there are some who are ashamed. Because they're still in their evil deeds. They're still in darkness, not the light. But those that have been wrought in God are unashamed. Can I say this? Those that are in God are uncommon. Hmm? They're unaccustomed. They're uncommon. Hmm, they're rare. Jesus said when he come back, when he find faith on the earth. They're unaccustomed. You don't see them everywhere. It's amazing how many people claim to be Christian in America and then they use four-letter words. And they go to bars. And they still live like sinners live. They don't know the same Jesus I know. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Huh? He changes you. He changes your desires. You no longer desire that old life. You desire the heavenly life. Huh? Can I say that those that are wrought in God are unaccustomed, they're uncommon. Uh, 1 Peter 2.9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, uh, a royal priesthood, uh, an holy nation, uh, a peculiar people, uh, that ye should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Uh, you see, once you get born again, you show forth the praises of God in your life. Hmm? People see a difference. They hear a difference out of your speech. They see a difference in your countenance and in your life. You don't go the places you used to go. You don't talk like you used to talk. You don't walk like you used to walk. You say, what happened? You got saved. You got born again. Hmm? Isn't it amazing how many Hollywoods and, 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 and uh, music stars talk about getting born again? Well, not too long down the road, they're back in rehab. They didn't get born again. They tried to turn over a new leaf. The problem is with leaves, when the winter time comes, they dry up, they crumble, and they break. You get born again, it lasts forever. Hmm? Uh, can I say, being wrought in God, you're unashamed. You're unaccustomed. You're uncommon. You don't look like the world. You don't act like the world. You don't talk like the world. You don't smell like the world. You know, if it, if, it, if it has feathers, if it has a bill, if it has web feet, and if it quacks, it's a duck. If it looks like the world, sounds like the world, smells like the world, acts like the world, guess what's of the world? That's what I have a problem with a lot of these so-called churches today. Uh, their music sounds like the world's music. The messages they get on Sunday sounds like worldly philosophy. The dress and the folks in the crowd looks like the world. When they leave the facility they call a church, they go to worldly places. 
kind of just tells me it's of the world. But if any man's in Christ, uh, all of a sudden things look different. Things sound different. Uh, when you come to the house of God, it doesn't look like the world. Uh, the songs sing praise unto God. Uh, and the folks sitting there look different. Uh, and they act different. Uh, used to, they didn't like to come to church. Now they say amen, hallelujah. Uh, now they get excited when there's preaching going on. Uh, and the preacher... Uh, He's not preaching worldly philosophy. Uh, he's preaching what thus saith the Lord. Uh, and folks' his lives are changed. Uh, you know the indictment against all this uh, newfangled religion? It doesn't change lives. That's why they turn over their crowd about once a year. Because what they have don't sustain them. That's why they always got to have all these kind of movements going on. I want to tell you something. 47 years ago I got in a movement he's called the Holy Ghost and he's been bubbling up inside of me ever since are you listening those that are rotten God they're unaccustomed uncommon they're unashamed can I say this those rotten God cannot be unaware there are people who say well I think I got saved there are people who say, I hope I got saved. There are people who say, I don't know if I got saved. Well, if you got saved, you know it. You cannot be unaware. Hmm? Matter of fact, uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse number 13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, uh, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Uh, I know they got uh, eternal life because I was there when it happened, huh? Listen, some 32 and a half, soon to be 33 years ago, that darling brunette walked an aisle and become my bride. I have not forgotten that, Miss Mary. Huh? There was question whether or not she's going to make it all the way down there, huh? Her dad was trying to talk her out of it all the way down. Rightfully so. But, Came my bride. I hadn't forgot that. Huh? I was there, Brother Jim, when all three of my children were born. I hadn't forgot that. I was there. Experienced it. I wouldn't recommend it. I would rather recommend going back where the guys waited in the waiting room. If you ever get married, vote for that, all right? Huh? Doctor said, you want to cut the cord? No! I don't want to be down there anywhere when all that's going on. But I was there. I was kicking and screaming, but I was there. I hadn't forgot that. Hmm? There are a lot of things I have forgotten, but the important things I've never forgotten. Now listen, how can I pass from death unto life how can I become born again and become a child of God and not remember it? Or not know if it happened? Mm -mm. Can I help you something? I was there 47 and a half years ago when it happened. And I haven't got over it since. Mm -mm. You cannot be unawares. Either you are or you aren't born again. It's that simple. If you think, well, I don't know, then you're not. If you can't go back to a place where you met the Master, if you right now can't go back in your mind to the place where you knelt and called on Jesus and asked Him to save you, friend, you're not saved. What a blessing to be aware of the day I got born again. Hmm? What a blessing. To know huh, that I passed from death unto life. There's a lot of folks. They can tell you when they got baptized. They can tell you when they joined the church. But they can't tell you when they got born again. But friend, that all that makes you is a wet sinner and a lost church member. Unless you can go back to a place where you got born again. And I say those rotten God cannot be unaware. Can I say that? Those that are rotten God cannot be unaffected. 
When Jesus saved you, it affected you. For all of eternity, it affected you in a good way. Hmm? Uh, when the Master put His hand on your life, it affected you. It, had cha it changed you. Hmm? Some of you used to be foul-mouthed. You're not foul-mouthed anymore. Why? You met the Master. Hmm? Matter of fact, if you're still foul-mouthed, you might not have missed the Master. Because hmm? He changed you. Changed your tongue. Changed your thinking. Changed your desires. Because He affected you. Hmm? Uh, you're not what you used to be. Huh? Used to be sorry. Now you're a saint. What a blessing. He affected you. Huh? You used to look like a hoodlum. Now you look pretty sharp, snazzy. Why? He affected you. Huh? Did I ever bring a gun and put it to your head and tell you to change the way you dress? But somebody told you how to dress. Huh? Because he affected you. Huh? Hmm? Can I tell the story about him? I'm picking on him. Let me tell you. Most people know he's, he's got a, he's got a, a mean Harley Davidson. When he got saved, it had skulls painted all over it. I never preached on skulls on a Harley Davidson. I don't even know if I knew you had one when you first started coming to church. But he driving it one day, and he got to looking at it and said, that thing looks like a mess. So what did he do? He painted it so it didn't look like a mess. Why? Somebody affected him. Hmm? Huh? He didn't want to look like the world anymore. Huh? He just painted it. What a blessing. See, you cannot know the Master and be wrought in God and be unaffected. He affects you. Huh? You know one of the first things He'll affect you in doing? He'll give you a desire to tell other people how to be born again. Huh? I'll never forget the night I got saved. First person I told was my daddy. I told him, I got saved tonight, Dad. Huh? When you get saved, you want to tell others. One fella said it this way, I was a beggar and found the bread, and I went and told other beggars where they can find the bread. Huh? That's what you want to do. You want to tell others about eternal life. Mm? Again, it gets back to being unashamed. Mm? I don't know about you, but after I got saved, the grass looked greener, the sky looked bluer, uh, the birds sounded sweeter. They probably sound that way all along, but I was, I was in darkness. But when I came into light, it was like a, the Wizard of Oz going from black and white to color. It was a whole new world, honey. Are you listening? Uh, when you get born again, it'll affect you. If you've been unaffected, your life hadn't changed, you may not be born again. Those rotten God, they cannot be unaffected. Now I thought about this. When you're rotten God, you cannot be unaccountable. See, when you're lost, you live for yourself. And you live because of yourself. And you live to please yourself. But when you got born again, all of a sudden, you no longer belong to yourself. You were bought with a price. You belong to the Lord. And now you're accountable to Him. Hmm? Not I, but Christ that liveth in me. Are you listening? You are accountable to Him. And as a member of His local church, you're accountable to other people. I said this in my Sunday school class. Brother Clint, the middle letter of pride is I. The middle letter of sin is I. When people, all they talk about, Brother Tony, is I, 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 they got an I problem. Hmm? When you get born again, it's not about I, I, I. It's about Him, Him, Him. Huh? And, and just think about this, Miss Mark. What if we all came in here and we had our own agenda this morning? It would have been a mess. God's not the author of confusion. But it's not about us. It's about minding Him. It's about being fitly framed together in Him. And tonight, or this morning, we're all accountable to Him and to one another. Because he lives in me and he lives in you. 
And so therefore, it's all about him. There are folks all the time say, well, I'll live however I want to. Doesn't affect anybody but me. Wrong. First of all, the Bible says no man liveth unto himself, no man dieth unto himself. There's always somebody watching you. Hmm? Matter of fact, your neighbors know when you go to church and they know when you lay out. Hmm? And it's not because they're watching the live stream. Because they're watching you. They're wondering if what you have is real. You are accountable. Mom and daddy, your children are watching you. And they're listening to you. They're watching. Grandma and grandpa, them grand youngins are watching you. And they're listening to you. Hmm? Do you ever wonder why little children sit in the sanctuary and all of a sudden they start yelling amen? They're learning that. By listening to people. You see, you are accountable to God and to man. What a blessing to be wrought in God. You know, the Bible says the ways of a transgressor are hard. You know, the world says the Christian life is a no fun life and it's a hard life. No, I'm having the time of my life. The ways of God's, His yoke is easy. His burden is light. You know what a heavy burden is? Carrying a sin burden. Hmm? I don't have to worry when I pillow my head at night. If I, if I die in the middle of the night, where I'm going to wake up. It's already settled. Hmm? I'm going to glory. Uh, Brother Phil says, I'm going to heaven with the hammer down. Are you listening? Heaven bound with the hammer down. See, those that, Brother Ray, don't have that assurance. They've got a heavy burden. Hmm. They're trying to fill a void in their life that only God can fill. They're seeking it in pleasures. They're seeking it in all kinds of things of this world. And that's why they constantly, constantly, constantly are seeking for something more. Hmm. You know why I've never sought for another God or another Savior? Because the one that saved me satisfied me. I don't need to look for another. I found the one. And his name is Jesus. Now my question this morning is this. Are you born again? And if you're born again, what kind of witness are you to those around you who aren't? This whole chapter started with a religious man coming to Jesus by night wanting to know the truth because he saw something in Jesus he didn't see in his religion I wonder what are they seeing in us they ought to see Christ they ought to see the light of God in our lives God help us if you're rotten God he's working on you so you can shine as a light to this dark world. I love Christmas time. I love the Christmas lights. Miss Nett and I walked the dog last night. Was looking at all the lights in the neighborhood, and I like it. I like it all. That's what we are to be every day of the year. We're to be on display, shining the light of God letting everybody know there is a Savior who came into the world and he came to bring light to your darkness. Isn't it amazing? People will drive all over the city to see lights this time of year. They ought to see them in us all year long. They ought to drive from miles around to come and see the light that they don't know anything about. My dear friend, shine his lights if you're rod and gold. If you're not wrought in God, if you're not 100% certain you're saved, you can be. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. We're going to invite you to come. You can come to Jesus. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. You come. We'll take the Bible show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. Your life can be changed today. Your life can have meaning and purpose today.
God can start a work in you today that will finish when you get to heaven. My dear friend, you can have assurance that when you die, heaven will be your home. You don't have to perish. Jesus loves you. He came so you wouldn't perish. You can have eternal life today. You're here today and you're saved and you're living beneath your privileges. You ought to get in the altar and say, God, help me to shine his lights. There are people all around me that need to see Jesus Christ in me. My dear friend, you and I are the workmanship of God. We ought to let God do a great work in our lives. Let's all stand, Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Some are already coming to the altar. If you're here today not saved, why don't you come? Well, we'd love to introduce you to Jesus. There's nothing like knowing Him and the free pardon of sins. Folks are coming. As they come and as they're picking out a song, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. We bless you and we praise you. We're thankful, Lord, for what you've done in our heart and our lives. Now, Lord, in a crowd this size, there may be some who aren't saved. I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Lord, there may be some coming for uh, other reasons. I pray your will would be done in their lives. God, we certainly pray that, Lord, we would shine as lights in this dark, depressed world. God, get glory, and we'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.